my god guys, Animal Creation is finally here this weekend and I finally can open my mouth about some of the spoilers that I couldn't talk about in my non-spoiler review. So if you didn't see the video, this is a spoilers review. If you don't want to be spoiled at all, do not check this out. I'll put down the link below if you want to see what my thoughts were of the film, non-spoilers. But if you're here and you don't really care about spoilers, or you've seen the movie, let's talk about Animal Creation because this is a film that I was not excited for. And if you've seen my review, I actually really enjoyed this film. I think I gave it an A or an A-. I really like this film a lot and now I've seen it twice and now I, I haven't gotten to see the post credit scenes because both screens I they didn't show the post credit scene sadly so this video won't contain that but what I do want to talk about is some of those moments in here that really just got me hyped and hyped and hyped and one of the main things I do want to talk about first is the Easter egg the big damn Easter egg because I know they're making this conjuring universe and this film actually makes me believe that a conjuring universe can work and the one thing that made me believe that is the way they sprinkled in Easter eggs so perfectly because we all know the nun movie is coming out next year and they actually sprinkled in a little Easter egg in there. There's a nun in the movie that takes care of the orphanage girls. And there's a part where this the guy who runs the orphanage comes around. He's like, oh, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? He's pointing at a picture of nuns. And he's like, who's this? And she turns the picture a little bit and you see half the face of the nun. I about freaked out of my seat of excitement of seeing that. Because the nun was one of the best additions to The Conjuring 2. And I loved seeing that in there. And then you also throw in... Later on, there's a part where Janice, I think that's the girl's name, she's in her wheelchair, and something just runs and starts pushing her. You don't get to see the face, but it looks like the shape of a nun, so I'm assuming that's also the nun with her little temptations in there, pushing her, and that was a great Easter egg in there as well. That, that I love the Easter eggs they threw into this film. Like, that is probably my favorite one of them all, and then I really just, we gotta talk about the ending. We, we have to talk about the ending. So it was the first movie, Annabelle. No one really liked the film. It, it, I know people that do, and people enjoyed it. The best scene in the first Annabelle film is that basement scene, but overall it was pretty big disappointment. The acting was par subpar, and it just wasn't that good. But the big thing about Annabelle 2 is it creates a dimension in between both and connects them so simultaneously perfect that I was just floored. And it, even though you don't like the first Annabelle, it's very creative how they ended this film. And the way they ended it, what of course, Annabelle, the girl who died and come back as the doll and blah, 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 she possesses Janice and Janice disappears by the end of the movie. No one knows where she went. Turns out Janice takes up under the name Annabelle and is at some orphanage way, way far away. Then magically, these two actors come in. And I heard the theater, everyone's wondering, like, why do they look so familiar? Why do they look so familiar? I was saying the same thing. I'm like, damn, they look so familiar, but I don't know what the actors' names are. Have I seen them in something? Are they from something else? Then it clicks. You see it says 12 years later. It's going through the pictures. Then it shows a girl's face. And that girl started looking familiar. I was like, why is this all looking familiar? You see these people with some rummaging in the night. You see they're older. The girl's probably around, like, 24 at this point. And then all of a sudden, you see him picking up the phone. It clicks. The guy goes to see who's out there, Annabelle comes out and slits her throat, and the guy comes in and grabs the mom. And if you know what scene I'm talking about, it's the one scene from the first Annabelle that I'll be playing while, this, while I'm talking. And it's when the neighbors wake up and you see them dying, and then the lights turn off, and then the neighbor goes across the street to find them dead. And it ends just right there. I love that ending. Because it ties to a bad movie that no one really liked, but it appreciates it. It keeps the first continuity in it there, and I liked seeing that. It was so creative and so fun. Now, if you haven't seen the first animal, it's not really mean much to you. You might not like it, but for f us fans who love The Conjuring, who are disappointed with the first animal, it's good to see that they at least kept that continuity in there and actually made the first movie livable. I, I actually don't hate the movie as much as I do. I still don't like it, but... I think it adds to the universe in a good way and just it, it puts it in there that like yes this happened yes it wasn't the best movie yes it wasn't the scariest film but you still have that there man some of the imagery in here with the demon there's a part where janice goes in and she sees this little girl talking then turns around and this demon comes out it's like holy shit you also have a part where um janice is going around in her wheelchair and she ends up you see the dolls at a table humming and Janice comes around and she gets, stands up and you're like, oh shit, she's standing up. Oh shit, she's standing up. There's a lot of oh shit moments in here. And the dad, the orphanage guy starts holding the cross towards her and his fingers just start going back, back, back. It was so gross. Yes, the CGI is a little iffy in there, but seeing that a demon was how it would move, how it would hide behind things, you'd see like the side of it. I love how David F. Sandberg directed and filmed those imageries in there. And then I think two of my favorite scenes, just imagery wise, was um, one of them is when she's going 
going around the little girl's room before she even sees her and she obviously finds Annabelle but she's going around finding stuff and her friend leaves the room but then she turns around and there's these two little puppets hitting each other over the head and obviously like me and my friend turned to each other and we're like what the fuck is going on they keep hitting each other and she grabs them they're not there it was so just gets you the goosebumps i'm getting goosebumps even talking about that scene because i don't know why but i really like that they use those puppets in here and then like use it as like an atmospheric scariness because there was no jump scares in that scene it was just atmospheric and i like that about that and then just and then i think my other two favorite imagery scenes was the scarecrow they built it up in the beginning and then you see the scarecrow like growing arms and just it just so creepy because you know the scarecrow is coming after them and it's just so intense of these other girls when they're running away and then there's this mom in the movie who you don't get to really see her face is a little messed up from annabelle screwing uh messing her up and clawing her eye out so she wears kind of half of a doll face a little weird doll face but she wears it in this part where yeah she doesn't make it through but you see half her body just decapitated up on the wall and then um, when the Lulu Wilson, I think that's her name, she comes down in this conveyor belt and she's in there. And you, you, early in the film, you see that she's on the wall and she's looking around with this flashlight and it looks not at the wall, turns around, follows the blood. And then she's like, bam, she's on the floor and she starts crawling towards her. And it just makes you like, go, go, go. And it's just, it's one of those films that even though this might not be, it is a very scary film. It will keep you on the edge of seat during your, during your viewing of this. And it, but it's very fun. It's very fun to get a group of friends together and go see this film because you'll be hyping each other up you'll be grabbing each other you'll be like holy shit this is going on especially if you're horror fans and especially if you love the conjuring universe i think that's what this film did so phenomenally and there's so many scenes in this film just like those that just get me so hyped about the film i really really like this film i am so shocked by how much better animal creation was within the first one but i mean it has a fantastic director on david f sandberg and the acting from the actresses in here the young actresses in here are so good that's very rare to see in a film and this is some of the best child performances i've seen since room that should say something and i stand by my grade from the first review i did of this and i really did like annabelle creation this spoiler review is meant just for me to eke about what i liked in these scenes and if you guys have seen the film please comment down below and tell me what your favorite scenes do you like what i like do you wish they would have done something more do you not like do you not agree with me do you not like this film at all i want to talk about it down below i know this film will be it's at 100 percent now on rotten tomatoes but i know it's going to drop it's probably i'm guessing it's going to go to 75 83 percent somewhere in that range i don't see it holding it 100 it's very rare when a horror film holds up that high unless it's an indie film but for me guys i totally enjoyed this film i hope you guys go and check it out if you guys watch this and you're kind of just wanting to see what spoilers there were go check it out i think you might be surprised by it other than that guys stay classy and thank you guys so much for watching this and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it